In this video, I'm gonna break down how a shutter drag can turn your boring images like this one into awesome images like these. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV and welcome to the construction zone of Orange County. What I want to do in this video is kind of demonstrate a couple different things. We're going to do a bit of automotive photography and we're going to do it in a terrible scene because I want to show you how incorporating motion can really spice up your images regardless of the scene that you're working in. And as I like to do, I like to get straight into things. So we're going to start with number one. I want you guys to think first, we're going to think camp, right? Number one is composition. Composition first, what I want to aim for. Well, I want to choose an angle and really you can do whatever you'd like. You're going to get a different result regardless of where you're shooting from. But for me, I'm going to choose an angle where I kind of have a background with a highlight and you can see that in the space between these trees right here. I'm going to aim to frame the car as it moves through and you'll see this right in that spot where there's the highlight. So it kind of draws attention to the car. The other thing I like about this is the dappled lighting on the ground as well as the kind of background highlights to shadows. It's going to make for interesting sort of foreground to background looks as I drag the image or drag the camera across the frame. And what I mean is if the ground is just one color, we're not really going to see the motion. But because we have dappled lighting, as we drag the areas of light and shadow are going to make lines through the frame, we're going to get something that's a little bit more interesting. So I like this. But let's do this. We're going to start with our before shot. So before we go and change our ambient settings, let me just show you what it would look like if we were to freeze motion in this kind of a scene. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's go to like say 1 500th of a second and I'm going to look for an okay exposure. We're going to go to um, F4 and ISO 200. And I'm going to look for the, you know, a, a not so great car to photograph because your befores have to incorporate terrible subjects like a bus. Yeah, that's nice. Just makes the before look that much more interesting, right? But you can see the area of highlight that I'm kind of working in. And you can also see how terrible each of these shots are. When we're incorporating like everything, we're freezing everything, we're showing this whole background, it looks really bad. And it's also not even a great time of day to be shooting. We're here midday. So we have an angle to the sun, but yeah, it doesn't look good. Not ideal for photographing cars or really anything. Let's go now to the second piece. We kind of know the composition, the angle. We have our before shot. Let's talk ambient light settings. What we're thinking here is I always want you guys to think of the setting that matters most to the creative effect that you're trying to achieve. And what I mean is if you look at a scene and you go, oh, I really want depth in this scene, then think aperture first and then dial in your shutter speed and ISO as needed, right? But here we're thinking of incorporating motion. So I want you to think shutter speed first. My voice just broke when I said that, but that's okay. It's natural. Shutter speed wise, I'll give you a little bit of a, a hint or tip. When we're talking about something like this, maybe one tenth to one thirtieth of a second would be a good place to start. But let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you the differences between them, right? Because what we're really talking about is at one thirtieth of a second, you'll get less motion than you would at say one tenth, but it's also easier to get the car, the subject sharp in the frame. We'll start at one thirtieth. What I'm gonna do is lower the ISO down to low. Then I'm gonna raise my aperture all the way, right around F11 at 1 30th is okay, okay? So at F11, low ISO and 1 30th, when a car comes across the frame, let me go ahead and uh, I'm gonna give you more tips too on this, don't go you just yet. I just want you to see the difference between the, the shutter speed. So as a car is moving across the frame, I'm gonna take the shot and it also matters, you know, how fast those cars are moving, right? Here's a nice little buzz. Okay, so we have a bit of motion right now, but because of the speed of the cars, I'm gonna slow it down more. So when the cars are going kind of slow, when your object that you're panning is going slow, go ahead and slow down the shutter speed. And to get the right exposure, I have to increase my aperture. So I'm gonna go up now to F16, okay? And then we're gonna wait for the cars to kind of go through. Ideally, by the way, you're not working in a spot where there's a stop sign for some of the people that's causing everybody to hold up. Okay, immediately we start to see that at 1 10th, I'm actually getting, and I actually got that one right on. So you can see like when they're traveling through that area of highlight, I can actually frame them right into there. 
So at one tenth, based on the speed that the cars are going, which is like maybe 10, 15 miles an hour, we're getting to a pretty decent effect. So I'm gonna leave it at one tenth, F16, low ISO. Okay, we've got ambient light dialed in. I am shooting raw, so I have a little more room in terms of pulling the, the details and everything out of the photograph. Now let's go to the modify piece. We're not gonna modify any of the light. We're good to go. So we skip right to photograph, right? When it comes to that step, the last thing I'm gonna say is what we wanna do is I want you to match the speed of the movement to the car going through the frame. The easiest way to do this is to actually line the car up with one of your AF points or a compositional piece of the shot, right? So I have the grid view turned on, so I might put the car at the bottom left where the grid is touching, and I'm gonna track the car as I move through. If I don't do this, this is what happens. Everything ends up being blurry. See, look, that car going through, I'm just gonna stay static, right? Everything is blurry. But if I match the speed of the car as I pan, then what ends up happening is that the background is gonna go blurry, but the car remains sharp because I'm moving at the same speed of the car. And you'll get some motion on the wheels and that kind of stuff too. This is why it's more difficult the slower you bring the shutter speed down because it's more time to essentially pan, right? So as the car goes through, we're gonna pan with the movement. And as long as I'm matching that speed, you notice that the cars are gonna come out sharp, or at least much sharper. So we're gonna go one tenth. We're good on that side. You have your tip in terms of how to hold, how to kind of follow them through the frame. A couple other things that I like to do, just simple tips camera wise, is make sure that you have high speed shooting turned on. So whatever your frame rate is, go to the highest frame rate you have available. For me, it's gonna be high speed continuous. And the last thing is I like to get a focus on where the cars are gonna be in the frame. So I'll use autofocus to get focus. And then what I'll do is I'll turn it off. And that way I'm not tracking or, or worrying about, you know, jumping focus at any point in time. So now with that, all I'm gonna do is wait for the right subject. I don't really wanna photograph any more of the poopy cars. It's time for the after shot. So when cool cars come through, I'm gonna shoot them and we'll see what we get. Bonus tip, be patient, shoot a lot of shots. Okay, we're done here. This was tons of fun. I think my favorite shot was probably the cyclist that kind of went through the frame. But you can use this technique to spice up any photograph, any shot, any subject that has motion to it. Pan, have fun with this practice it before you put it into like a real world situation and know that depending on your subject you're gonna have to adjust that shutter speed based on how quickly they're moving that's it for us hope you guys enjoyed if you did we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel you guys know how youtube works you can help me out by liking the video that tells adorama and the youtube algorithm that this is a good video to check out and comment below let me know what you guys think and if you guys have questions other things you want me to cover all that jazz and you can find me at pygersa on instagram peace